Hi there, this is Patrick Belton of the InsureTech Fintech Revolution.com. This presentation brief uh, covers the Internet of Things in the insurance industry. In the context of the Internet of Things um, and its forthcoming disruption on the insurance and financial industry, there are some discernible trends that are shaping uh, your, your organization, your business, in terms from an IoT perspective. And what you need to take home, the key takeaway here is that IoT is perhaps the most transformative and compelling application of innovative technologies for businesses and consumers that, that we as a society face and that your organization faces, that your leadership group faces. So although it remains in the earlier stages of its revolution, we can recognize some meaningful trends, significant trends that are emerging with its adoption. And some of those will be outlined in this brief, but this is not an exhaustive list of them. Let's quickly just insert into our discussion uh, a definition of Internet of Things. What is IoT? Just so we're on the same page here. IoT refers to connected devices that can transmit data using technologies such as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. These devices include things like wearable devices and sensors and household appliances and connected vehicles using telematics. Before we go a little bit deeper into the Internet of Things material, let's just list out in this slide a summary of the benefits of IoT. It's clear that it's going to have a fundamental transformation of the customer experience. So that's in terms of the delivery of services. So whether it's claim settlement process, sales delivery, or the customer service and customer support mechanisms in organization, these will be radically impacted uh, by Internet of Things. And the IoT is going to lead to, um, to a degree, to fewer claims and to lower premiums. It's going to pressure uh, your revenues uh, down and uh, pressure premiums low, to be lower. It's going to lead to uh, different forms of data. The sources of data that are engendered by Internet of Things are, are creating new sources of data. But that also does create problems. But the benefit is it creates a more intimate form of a customer engagement. It empowers your firm to develop a more intimate relationship with your customer. So it should lead to new sources of revenue by doing that. And it's, this, um, it's going to impact your business model. So all of that, because it's changing the processes involved in sales, service, delivery, customer support, you actually must fundamentally alter your business model for your insurance organization. And this will challenge many of your firms, and a lot of you won't get it right. So it's going to improve the, uh, it gives you predictive ability, Internet of Things. Because the IoT is attached to different sensors and assets that are insured, you're getting uh, a window into the performance of those assets, and that can help you predict losses. And then, therefore, ri uh, risk mitigation, it, you become empowered in this way because it can help foster improved risk mitigation techniques. So uh, it enables and this is a key thing with IoT is directly and indirectly it enables and facilitates your participation in the partnership economy and the subscription economy, which is giving your firm deeper tentacles and hooks into the broader ecosystem economy. So this is a wonderful aspect of IoT. And another thing at the end I just want to harp on is friction. IoT, a key element of it, is, is, is reduces friction within your firm's customer engagement ability. You know, whether it's the claim settlement process, the sales process, the service process. So it reduces the friction both for the consumer on their end, but also on your end uh, as the insurance org on the supply side. Now let's just briefly touch on a summary uh, involving the Internet of Things, a summary of the risks and some of the issues and even dangers around it. 
Uh, one thing concerns fraud. As much as IoT is going to help, a benefit's going to help prevent fraud in certain ways, it's also going to introduce new forms of fraud dangers, especially in the claims uh, process and uh, claims issues, and also with the applications for insurance. New forms of fraud will arise. So you're going to have to find ways, devise ways to protect against that. Another thing involves data. That's a huge thing about IoT is because it's generating massive amounts of data, what everyone calls them big data. So what do you do with that? How do you use it? How do you leverage it? That is a challenge for your organization. It empowers you, but trying to harness it is another problem. So a key thing with data is data theft along the data pipeline journey, because that data has got to come from somewhere and get to somewhere. So while it's on that journey, involving IoT, where it's generated at the asset, point of asset, from a sensor, it's got to get to your organization. That journey, that's fraught with uh, potential of data theft. So there's privacy issues there too. So th that also increases the opportunity for data manipulation along that data pathway. There's this, um, you're going to struggle just to make use of the voluminous amounts of data sourced through the Internet of Things. And then the, there's the, another issue and danger is the cost of the investment from your organization in order to seize the advantages stemming from Internet of, Internet of Things is significant. Um, another thing is that it looks like IoT, in my opinion, it could advantage the larger firms, especially carriers who are direct consumer, but not just carriers, but even really large brokerage firms like Marsh and Canada, Marsh and Aon and Hub, which have greater capital resources and people resources to, to galvanize their firm around IoT. So, and another thing is that in order for your organization to capitalize on Internet of Things, your firm has to change its business model. So this goes back to your leadership. Are you capable of doing that? And if you look at the brokerage channel, in particular in Canada, the MGA channel, you know, historically, you know, these are profitable organizations, but typically they're just producers, salespeople who have ascended to the ownership and leadership of the organization, but they know nothing about technology. They don't know anything about this transformation of society. They don't know how to lead and manage the firm within this new ecosystem economy. So those firms are in danger of perishing unless there's a change in leadership. Another thing is that Internet of Things requires significant investment in your security architecture. And this is because of the hacking danger. And IoT opens the door to different types of cyber attacks. So you've got to invest a lot to protect against that. And this goes back to the leadership issue. And there's generally an ignorance among Canadian insurance executives of IoT, what constitutes it, what it offers, as well as even having a rudimentary understanding of technology and the transformation of society and the insurance industry. So how are they going to plan for this in their strategic planning and then address it through their actions that the firm takes? The Internet of Things is about to radically disrupt the traditional insurance business model and modernize your traditional processes, especially in risk assessment. Needless to say, IoT, the Internet of Things, is going to significantly, actually massively, disrupt the insurance and financial industry. Keep in the forefront of your minds, your leadership group, that those who are able to listen, to learn, and to adapt are likely to be the winners in the IoT environment. I don't mean to sound trivial, but the reality is few insurance financial firms in Canada actually have the ability to listen, learn, and adapt, as simple as they are to, to state. IoT is going to revolutionize and disrupt the insurance and financial industry like nothing else you will see over the next decade, decade and a half. Companies will literally disappear from the landscape along with many occupations and jobs in the industry. The deployment of the Internet of Things, of IoT, has, we have seen it, it's disrupted many niche organizations across multiple industries, including the, that of insurance and financial services, but also in, obviously in technology and even agriculture. Some organizations are shifting, and this is necessary for your insurance firm, to, sh to shift from a traditional insurance product over to that of smart offerings and outcome-based type deliverables. IoT is enabling the adoption of smart contracts in the insurance industry and in others industries as well. 
And this fundamentally alters the claim settlement process, essentially giving it cause to occur in real time in a matter of seconds, in a couple of minutes. Literally, I'm being literal, through a purely digital, mobile environment in a broad ecosystem. So taking this into consideration, if you are a mutual insurance carrier, especially a lot of the smaller mutuals, or if you are in the brokerage channel or the MGA channel in Canada, the IOT is on the doorstep. So is your organization even discussing it? Are you planning for it? What are you gonna execute in your operations to embrace Internet of Things? And the reality is when I talk to most of you in the industry in Canada, in those areas, IOT never enters your planning discussions. So will your business be here in 2030? One needs to think of your insurance offerings from the consumer perspective, and then from that construct profitable outcomes for your business through that lens and perspective. Your business model, conceptualization and the development of it requires your leadership group to think through the consumption side of the offer to the consumer and the demand side. Embracement of Internet of Things will deliver your organization revenues and profits, but it also requires collaboration with and partnership with other businesses, industries, and competitors and suppliers to your industry and to your organization while you're leveraging new and evolving ecosystems in our emerging mobile society. Your customers don't merely purchase your products and services, and too many of you think of it that way. In, in this new societal environment that is evolving beneath our feet, customers don't just purchase products and services. Your customers are also looking for additional opportunities. What they want is what your products and services, they want to know what those can do for them. And hence, it is important to understand the consumer aspect of your offerings. Your business model, conceptualization, and the development of it also require your leadership to think on the production side of the offer, the supply side. This will help your leadership to better understand how the Internet of Things product is created and delivered and, that, and how that engenders a symbiotic growth opportunity for your organization. Something that I do want to emphasize and that your leadership group need to pay close attention to with regard to IoT, because IoT is revolutionizing the, for in, in the insurance industry, the delivery, the sales, and the service aspects of it, but also the claims process. It's going to have a massive impact in that area. So it's important that your organization clearly understand how, I, how IoT works and how that projects forward in transforming the insurance and financial industry and how that in turn is going to impact your organization and your strategic planning. Among other things, it's going to be responsible for, eliminate, for eliminating a great amount of claims uh, jobs and employment rules prior to the year 2030. And its adoption in the insurance and financial industry does favor, I believe, a direct-to-consumer approach by insurance carriers, which further weakens, is weakening the brokerage channel over the course of this decade. So if you are in the brokerage channel, you need to plan for this now and act accordingly now. With us embarking on a short, brief discussion on some challenges facing the insurance industry involving the Internet of Things, one must first consider the promise. What's held out by the promise of IoT? Well, if you stand back, in every insurance sector, Internet of Things promises to substantially reduce losses, but more importantly, it's going to transform the relationship with policyholders, with your cons consumers. And that's fundamental. So I'll give you an example. Recent automobile insurance commoditization has placed downward pressure on premiums. The Internet of Things 
allows insurance organizations to provide value-added services, such as driver feedback, and these can lead to a closer and more proactive relationship with the consumer, with your policyholders, but while also generating new revenues. So the promise held out by IoT is it can be an enabler for your organization to devise ways to create new revenue streams that complement your traditional insurance revenue streams. Now there are some broad-based organizational advantages we should highlight. These advantages actually apply across all areas of your organ insurance organization. For instance, if you're on the carrier side, actuaries and underwriting, IoT provides new data to more accurately assess and price risk. From a claims perspective, IoT can power automated loss notification based on the sensor data. And for marketing executives, the Internet of Things brings opportunities for unprecedented insights into your customer behaviors. Now, obviously, IoT adoption in the insurance industry does remain in its earlier stages. But that being said, there is significant process behind the scenes in bringing it to reality and ado wider adoption in the industry. But I think that the widespread adoption for, of IoT is going to come about when the industry overcomes a handful of challenges, which I will note now. One primary key challenge is IoT is going to bring disruption to your existing business model. So insurance executives, leadership, they face a major dilemma with the emergence of the Internet of Things. There's benefits for insurers which center on risk mitigation and lower claims for certain. But the competitive nature of the insurance industry means that fewer losses will lead to lower premiums over time. So shrinking revenue is never good for any industry. So new sources of revenue growth will be a driver to the Internet of Things adoption and is a challenge, a fundamental challenge for your organization. Insurance organizations will encounter new competitors who are already focused on the IoT opportunity, including auto manufacturers and home security companies and digital companies such as Google and Amazon. So your organization needs to consider partnering with these firms in their developing ecosystem. And keeping in mind that IoT promises to provide discounts for individuals who are safe drivers or exhibit healthy lifestyles. But unless the Internet of, unless the Internet of Things can change behavior across an entire population, individuals or businesses found to be a bad risk could be more heavily penalized than in traditional insurance models. So this actually may cause a backlash among the general public and even hinder the growth of insurance products that are linked to IoT. Another challenge concerns that of data management. You know, the insurance industry has always been data centric. In the past, insurance companies have relied on historical data from policy administration solutions and claims management applications and even billing systems. But newer and bigger data sets add another dimension and also a challenge for your organization to leverage those larger data sets, big data as everybody likes to call it. So the challenge is to process this explosion of data in a timely manner in order to make the right business decisions. Artificial intelligence plays a hand in that. Unfortunately, many insurance organizations are struggling to process and analyze even traditional data. So really, what hope is there for many of your firms with the emergence of IoT over the next decade? And, and addressing the challenges arising from big data volumes generated by the Internet of Things requires an enterprise data management strategy. And this in particular challenges the brokerage channel.
in Canada. This is important in merging the new IoT sourced data with your traditional data like customer and policy records. This data management strategy for your organization should and must provide unified solutions and tools and methodologies and workflows for managing your Internet of Things sourced data as a core asset. And by the way, that will have a positive impact on the asset valuation of your business. It will increase it. A third obvious challenge concerns data ownership. Ownership of your data, whether it's traditionally sourced or IoT sourced data. So look, data created and made available through IoT enables insurance organizations to better understand risk and obviously then better price it. But data ownership remains a challenge for many insurance organizations. And in fact, too many don't even discuss it as part of their strategic planning, let alone act on it. So the big question is, does the data belong to the insurance carrier or to the customer or to the brokerage channel? Customers may argue they have rights over their data and need access to historical data on their claims history in order to switch insurance carriers at renewal. That's a common example. This will be a very interesting discussion point for insurance companies and other insurance organizations in the near future. The brokerage channel, though, is inherently disadvantaged because they have taken such a passive relationship with their data over the years. And even though it's passing through their hands on its way and on its migration to the carriers, the carriers are collecting it and harnessing it to a degree. But the brokerage channel and individual brokerage organizations have been oblivious to doing anything with their data. And in this emerging digital economy and ecosystem economy, that provides the brokerage channel at an inherent disadvantage. And that disadvantage, by the way, is substantial in threatening the very existence of your organization over the next five to 10 years. A fourth challenge involving Internet of Things concern, for your insurance organization concerns regulation. So look, obviously the insurance industry was one of the first business sectors to be tightly regulated by government. And it continues to be closely scrutinized by public authorities in, in Canadian society. Many insurance authorities, though, are going to struggle with how to regulate the data created or enabled by the Internet of Things and by sensors. So while regulations already, to an extent, cover data privacy, the more invasive nature of IoT source data can present many new challenges to those regulations and to government and, and, and to your insurance organization, obviously. Indeed, really, the mobility of, this is the key thing, the mobility of Internet of Things source data may even lead to issues on the regulation of cross-border data. For example, when a driver travels to another country. There's all kinds of examples like this that one can imagine. Another challenge that your organization needs to be concerned with involving the Internet of Things is around uh, that of fraud and data security. As Internet of Things becomes more widespread, it will attract more potential for cyber attacks and fraud. So like the vast quantity of data that will flow between, for example, the connected vehicle, the connected home, and the insurance organization, that's vulnerable to interception. And that data, by the way, will, that same data stream I just described will also connect if it involves a car to repair shops, perhaps to a law firm, to an appraiser, uh, to the police services, a number of organizations. Those provide all kinds of opportunities for hackers to intercept that data. So the new IoT products, generated products in the insurance industry and financial industry are also likely to lead to new types of application and claims fraud that we've never seen before. Insurance organizations are going to need to invest more heavily in data security and fraud protection. And this, by the way, is a weakness on the brokerage channel because there is a, they don't do much in that regard. There's just a large ignorance among brokerage channel leadership 
uh, are sur surrounding, surrounding um, security and fraud. So while realizing the full potential of IoT for insurance industry and your organization, it's not going to be without its challenges. And it's early exploitation though, that we've witnessed in certain Western countries, it's already producing positive results. IoT undoubtedly makes losses easier to predict and to prevent. Smart home devices and wearables and the imminent arrival of the driverless car in the next few years, these things are ushering in a shift toward a new type of customer relationship, a new type of customer engagement for your organization where insurance will become less reactive and more preventative. The winners in this type of society and industry will be organizations that overcome today's obstacles in order to embrace change and capitalize on this uncertainty. For your insurance organization, IoT is a business opportunity. It is not just a technology opportunity. IoT has been viewed mostly as a technology challenge though, but you have to learn more about it because it is more than just this for your company. Maximizing the economic impact of the Internet of Things requires an effort on the part of your leadership group to make a broad set of meaningful changes to your business model, to your business practices, not, not only to mention also where you make investment. Let me give you an example outside of insurance. A good example that you can relate to uh, considers wind turbines, which we see scattered across Canada now. Well, connecting that wind turbine to the internet means that it can send data to managers and supervisors about when it needs to be serviced or that some form of optimization of that wind turbine is required. But if the necessary management and maintenance business processes and people are not in place, then that supply chain is not able to deliver a replacement part so that the benefits of IoT uh, can be realized. So that's a problem. I will leave it to you and to your leadership to come up with examples of this application within the insurance industry context. For your organization, disciplined execution across multiple use cases, that is the path forward to receiving value for your firm's investment in Internet of Things. There are hundreds of IoT applications with a very wide, diverse range of potential value for your firm. But you should perhaps consider beginning any IoT effort with a clear vision and comprehension and a reconceptualization of your business practices and your business model. In dialoguing with many uh, research and management consulting firms in recent years, a lot of them will confirm to you that the, that most, the most Internet of Things value in terms of improvement to your firm's bottom line, that emanates from trying multiple use cases, so experimentation. And each of those use cases would be grounded on a clear business case tied to your strategy and then executing those with hounded discipline rather than taking the more common approach where the sex and candy ideas win out the day. So be practical with your strategy to embrace IoT for your firm. And don't always copy what your competitors are doing because that may not be suitable to your business culture or strategy or uh, staffing. So your greatest success for your firm involving IoT the greatest impact on your firm, positive impact, is going to come, emanate from following a learning curve that builds across these multiple use cases. And that's where you not just must experiment, but you must be willing to embrace failure as part of that process of discovery. The subscription economy is going to play, and is playing, a much larger role in your firm's present and future. 
And if you are not discussing the subscription economy and your participation in it amongst your leadership, your leadership group and your insurance organization, then you know, you, you're not gonna be long for the future. You will be out of business very quickly by 2025 or 2026. IoT is involved in this subscription economy. It's in gra actually Internet of Things, to state this clearly, is it's actually gradually enabling more subscription business models. But there is some resistance with consumers who must come around to this being a more normal way of their life, which is the subscription model of, of consumerism. So the subscription economy, but also the Internet of Things, IoT, it ties directly into an emerging and newer form of insurance products, and that's what many call episodic insurance, buying an insurance product for a particular episode in time. So, you know, some people can refer to this as, uh, in, in business textbooks as a power by the hour or a concept, something uh, circulating around that. But that type of power by the hour concept in, in highly complex industries uh, that involve sophisticated machinery, like such as an aircraft manufacturer or aircraft engine manufacturer, you know, that's actually been around for decades, uh, the verbiage and those concepts. But in the insurance industry, much less so. So what you need to think about, conceive about for your insurance organization is how connected assets, which your firm's insuring for the consumer, so how connected assets of um, a much lesser degree of complexity than an aircraft engine, and how that, the value of that, how that can be sold by the hour or by the minute, not just by the year on an annual policy. So what you need to do now is offer insurance, create insurance products to be sold, insure a camera by the hour, insure a camera by the minute. And this can be a win-win for the seller as well as the insurance buyer. And you can relate to the subscription economy in this way. Think about it on, from the household side or, or from that arena. For, there's been non-connected, non-connected technology-wise, lower value products such as food and toiletries, which have long been available by subscription. But connected higher value product subscriptions, for example, appliances and computers, those have become available too. But the um, embracement of those by the consumer has so far trailed expectations for, which were probably too aggressive in the early going. Now, in the failure of those couple of examples I cited, I cited where the subscription type model has not taken flight to the degree that many believed, this could be the case because those types of assets have a shorter lifespan compared with, say, an industrial asset like an aircraft engine, which is obviously highly sophisticated with a 20 or 30 year lifespan. Um, leasing can achieve a similar benefit, really, in that type of environment uh, for, for the household consumer. So, and predictive maintenance is essentially non-existent with a um, dishwasher, right? And the replacement or warranty option is still preferred today by consumers. But don't let that influence your thinking with insurance products and services, because it does have a, a significant role to play in the insurance industry and the delivery mechanism, and it will um, uh, lead to wider adoption. And just in doing consumer research myself, I've seen that there's a demand from consumers for this, but the insurance industry in Canada, the carrier level, the MGA level, the brokerage level, through their willful ignorance, are refusing to listen to the consumer and provide them with what they want. So it is established that industrial type sectors have uh, gained more meaningful and significant momentum in embracing Internet of Things. You know, in the oil and gas sector, mining, utilities, agricultural spaces, uh, there is a, a greater impact, relatively speaking, than the insurance and financial industry at this point in time. Those heavier, let's call them industrial sectors, uh, they have been leading the way in getting fuller value from IoT through connecting their products that they manufacture and sell or combining connected products into a more efficient value chain. And that's the key thing though to keep in mind with the insurance industry in Canada is how IoT is going to affect the value chain. 
And then where does your organization fit into that value chain? And then how IoT is going to affect the value chain and thereby impact your organization? This must be taken into account in your, strate your strategic planning, what your firm is executing today. You cannot wait five or six years for this. I recall looking at an example of this uh, outside of the insurance industry um, in terms of the bracement of IoT. And it, would have, it concerns um, a global energy firm, a very, very large one actually. And they have had been using and are using Internet of Things applications as a part, a component part of a broader process and technology upgrade program. And their aim was to reduce their unit production costs by a minimum of uh, a third, a 30 to 35 percent over a five year period. And what was amazing was that in the first three years of that program, they'd saved billions and billions of dollars in capital, in capital costs. And this was through the application of IoT enabled analytics to their data that they had warehoused and were collecting. But what this also helped them to do was to squeeze more um, yield, because they, they, they had some oil wells. They're actually, actually able to get a higher yield out of some of their mature, older oil wells. So it helped on the revenue. So it wasn't just squeezing costs they were able to benefit from. They're actually able to increase the revenues. So your leadership group can, can conceive of similar type of applications of Internet of Things and benefits for the insurance industry and your organization. A very relatable example of Internet of Things for you uh, concerns the two companies which are massive globally, Amazon and Google. And those firms have hit a critical mass in uh, one sector, which is connected homes. So, and this is critical because this is going to have a big impact and is actually having an impact on the insurance industry in a very, very fundamental way. I'm not going to explore all of those now, but the connected home has been a condo or connected apartment, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's been a commercially available concept now for, believe it or not, much longer than you think, actually about 25 years. But it's not always lived up to its hype in the early going, well, actually, it outright failed. It's really only the last six or seven or eight years that it's, it's ascended and is actually having a, a tangible change on the way we live our life daily in our homes. Alexa and Google Assistant have achieved this critical mass. And despite some uh, obvious security and privacy concerns that many of us have, around the connected home devices. They are, the fact is, they're, they're becoming increasingly integrated into how we operate things in our homes and live our lives. And in the end, in the case of Alexa and Google, they both of those are establishing a position in the marketplace as a control point for the home. Whereas in past years, uh, prior to their uh, ascendance, their, these other previous attempts, in comparison, those were just too expensive, they were too complicated, and they weren't, let's call it, future-proof. And consumers nowadays, especially younger ones under the age of 35, have embraced these connected home devices, and they're using these devices to initiate shopping and control their entertainment, to order an Uber, adjust the thermostat, and dim their lighting, and even make coffee. And this has significant imp imp implications for your organization and its IoT strategy as the manufacturers and retailers, including insurance organizations, position their products and their services to integrate with connected homes. So I ask you, what is your MGA? What is your insurance brokerage? What is your insurance carrier doing in this regard? I know some of the bigger carriers in Canada, whether it's an Intact or Aviva, um, are looking at this in Gore Mutual, but some of the other carriers, this is not enough of a discussion around the strategy table and leadership table. So what is, in, especially in the brokerage channel, do you even discuss this? What are you doing uh, as this encroaches on your turf and your value chain? Conflicts over data access are delaying the full business impact of IoT. You know, think about data and data asset, data collection, and data leveraging for your firm and your organization in Canada. You know, for years, it was rarely a senior level decision to give the data created by your organization or 
um, some mechanisms linked to your organization to anyone making a reasonable case to see it. So if there's a party outside your organization who wants to somehow see your data, uh, this could be a cooperative partner uh, outside of the insurance industry ecosystem, that discussion would just be shut down. I mean, you really wouldn't entertain it and it would never really advance to a senior level. But asset owners have, and asset owners of organizations, but asset owners of data have become savvy and increasingly savvy in the last handful of years and are placing restrictions on who is allowed to view and use the data coming from their uh, sell of, sale of products and services and their uh, computer infrastructure uh, within the context of their firm. And then layer onto this where governments and regulators have implemented strict data sovereignty and privacy regulations, often granted for good reasons. But in practice, they're creating further restrictions and complications on top of those laws which is impacting your organization's firm ability to not just collect the data, but use it to improve your business model. And this is an unfair fight, really, because insurance carriers and insurance brokerages in Canada are uh, tightly regulated. And so your ability to use data and collect it and help your business model and firm along and help the consumer in doing so is negatively impacted by the, the uh, regulators who are hurting your business model. But the Googles and Amazons of the world, for example, and the Apples of the world, these technology firms, their use of data is not regulated. Take the privacy laws aside. Look at the abuse of Facebook in the market and our government does nothing about it. Any layer of government in Canada does nothing about it. Their use of data is not regulated. So if Facebook, for example, ever decided to enter the insurance space, they have a massive data advantage over an incumbent insurance organization in Canada. And there should be outrage in Canada towards government officials and bureaucracies and regulators over this very fact. What is an interesting and fascinating twist in the world of data is that sometimes the company actually owning the data producing asset may not always be the company that's best positioned to leverage that data going forward. And another issue with data, it just involves the disputes and the legal wrangling over data ownership and access to it. And these are delaying the value creation opportunities involving data. And those opportunities tie directly into the Internet of Things. But within this context, at the end of the day, concerning data and IoT, it's likely that two basic scenarios are going to emerge. The first is that companies will be open to sharing their data with other competing firms in their space since this provides more value to the to the operators of those current firms than going it alone this is critical to the brokerage channel there must be cooperation among the various brokerages in canada the second likely scenario is that business firms organizations will keep control maintain control of their data in order to differentiate performance and capitalize on it itself. Now, obviously, if carriers the size of an intact or Aviva, they've got such a massive amount of data warehouse, that makes sense in their case. But that will be, in terms of the carriers doing that, uh, choosing the scenario too, that's to the detriment of the insurance brokerage channel and marginalizes the insurance brokerage channel, which is at inherent comparative, competitive advantage. So if you are a broker, what is your leadership doing about this today? about your data culture and your plan. And you can't just plan for this. You have to act, you should have been acting on it years ago, but you have to aggressively act on it today going forward.